Hello and welcome back to another modeling tutorial. This time we're going to be working on something a little different. Um, <clears throat> so what I have here is a rifle model. It's not completed, but it's getting there. Um, it's a rifle for a project that I'm working on. And as you can see, I've sort of made it modular to where I can switch out handguards and barrel lengths, etc., etc., to just switch them up a little bit. Okay, so currently it's wearing this sort of quad rail here. If you know anything about, the, the, you know, uh, rifles and stuff, there are these rails on here that are designed to attach accessories like this front sight here is sort of screwed down to this rail um, and I want to add a light that is going to be attached to the rail as well so that light is something of this nature uh, it's a light that's attached to this part here which is what will clamp down on the rail you can actually see similar setup right here um, so that's what we're going for now Mind you, I'm, I'm not really interested in, in replicating a specific brand of light. Um, <clears throat> I'm more interested in, you know, getting sort of something visually interesting. Um, if you look at, here, yeah, let's open this image. Uh, see if we can get any closer. Eh, well, let's do it this way. I'm just going to... Open image in new tab. There we go. Now I can get pretty close. You'll see that you got some of this interesting detail here. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put in some of that. You have some on here. Now you got to be careful with this kind of detail because that's that's a lot of polygons. So you got to be careful with using too much of it. Um, I might put I might add that to the front maybe just to so because this is really smooth and kind of uninteresting. I, I like things to be visually interesting. Now this type of light comes with two options. It's got the uh, tail switch here, which you would replace this long switch here. And this is if you, if you want to be able to activate the light using the back button here. And then the other option is uh, this switch here, which basically you would put the light on and then maybe stick it up to the top of the rail or wherever your thumb's going to be able to get to it to press down. Um, to press down on this pad which turns the light on and off i think i'm going to go with this setup here the, the the pad here with the cord again it's more visually interesting than just having the tail cap on there um and i think it's just going to add especially with this wire here i think that's going to add a little bit more visual interest to the rifle so that's what we're going to do so it's a pretty simple model it's, it's basically a cylinder with some detailing on it uh, there's a little extra stuff here just to get that, get it to line up with the rail so you can clamp it down. So in the model right now, these, these are just rail covers. Um, people who have these types of guns generally, and if they have these sort of quad rails here, the rails are kind of sharp and, and you don't want to be holding them directly. So they put rail covers on there, which are usually made out of some kind of rubber or plastic and what they do is they make it so you're not touching the actual rail and it's a much softer feeling uh, surface than if it was just bare rail so that's what i put on there so once we make once we get the light i think i want to put it on this side of the gun here so i'm gonna have to cut back some of these rail covers okay so that's what we're going to do so first thing i'm going to do is just make a new cylinder and right now, I'm not worried about size relative to the gun itself. I can always scale this down later. The thing that I am worried about is proportion. I want to make sure this looks that when we model it, it looks proportional to this. Um, now, I'm not really worried about maybe getting you know a side view of this so that I can model to it. It's a very, it's a pretty simple, straightforward object. It's just a cylinder, like I said before, and then certain sections are bigger than others so that that's that's pretty easy so i think we can just eyeball it and get it pretty good um again i'm not trying to recreate this exact light so you know if i feel if i feel the sort of urge to do it i you know i might add extra stuff 
um, just to make it more interesting to me or just just to my liking or whatever it is so um, I'm not interested in making this exact light if I was maybe doing a commercial for this light then obviously I would be interested in that but as it is right now I just need a light it doesn't have to be a, the exact one okay so I'm gonna start with our cylinder here um, and if you're not aware this is 3d studio max this is version 2019 um, so I go back and forth when I model between Maya and 3d studio max and now I've even started using blender a little bit so um, if you are getting into this business you you want to be able to use multiple tools don't get stuck with using one tool tools are easy to learn it's the techniques that take a little bit of time so once you know the techniques you can basically use them in any tool all right so let's rotate this I'm gonna turn on my angle snap and rotate it 90 degrees okay so what do we have we have let's do this main section right here okay did I lose my 3d there it is so maybe I'm going to drop the height back a little bit okay and I'm going to add an edit poly on the top of this conversely what you could do is just right click and go to editable poly and convert it but I'm just going to use an edit poly modifier okay so when you open that you can see all the sub objects so I'm going to select polygon I'm going to select this polygon here hit W for move tool oops not what I wanted to do actually you know what I'm gonna delete that polygon because technically I don't need let's try that again I don't need the the caps okay um, well you know what I forgot to do I'm gonna go back here to my cylinder in fact let's delete this edit poly so what we need to do is decide exactly how many sides we want our cylinder to have this one has 24 right now um, what's going to determine how many sides you want is some of these details in here you can see that there's detailing on the bezel here there's detailing here and there's obviously the detailing here um, I'm gonna use this to determine how many sides I want so um, I think it's, it's a little bit clearer here what's going on I'm gonna assume that this is the same as this so it's a little bit clearer here to see what's going on so we'd have to count how many of these are so I'm gonna probably just looking at these uh, this is probably a little bit more than I would want to try and model for this for the simple reason that um, that's a lot of polygons just to, to model this detail and there's a lot of polygons um, we could of course texture it on there I, I tend to like modeling stuff uh, even if it does use some polygons but what I'll do is model fewer of these around so if we go for something like 24 so let's look at our so right now this is a 24 sided cylinder and I don't know 24 but they might be a little too big and not as interesting if we go say 32 and I want to turn on cap segments here just because the, and the reason I do this if we go into the where is my front view I want to make sure at least this is just something that I do we want to make sure that we our cylinder gets split perfectly down the center on the y-axis and also on the x-axis you'll see if I go to say 34 you'll see that my center one isn't there these are sort of off to the side I don't have a center one here so you want to get a multiple of four I think it is so if we go up another four one two three four to 36 you'll see I still have a center one and I still have a one through uh, X there so let's go 36 let's let's see I think that'll be fine um, we don't want to go crazy so I'm gonna take my cap segments off because I'm just gonna delete those polygons anyway so we'll do 36 and see how that works okay so again I'm just going to add now j again 
I could just convert this edible poly, but watch what happens. When I do that, I lose my cylinder. So if I needed to go back like I just had to do, I'd have to just delete this whole cylinder and make a new one. Or hope that I have enough undos in the queue to be able to get to where I had the cylinder. So if I undo this now, I'm, I'm, I have my cylinder. I'd rather put an edit, edit poly on here so if i if i messed if i decide to go back here i could just delete the set of poly and i'd be i'd be back to my cylinder and i can adjust these things as i need to so that's the nice thing about 3d studio max is that it's got a non-destructive stack where if you just keep adding modifiers and you don't like something that you did to modify you can just delete the modifier and you'll go back down to the previous item in the stack okay so moving on to the where to go right there so this this is this part right here we're going to bump out here have a and then bump back down uh and then have a short another a short section here and then we're going to bump out again so the way that i'm going to do that now anytime you bump out like that um, there's a bit of an angle it's not just straight out there's a bit of an, a slope to this shit section right here and you want to make sure you match it on the other side and the way that it, instead of just extruding out into this raised area then across then down again and trying to match the circumference of this to this i'm just going to do some cuts here to help me out so uh where's three studio mike did i just start my yeah i think i did Blah. all right don't worry about that um so i'm going to Again, I'm going to go in here, go in Polygon, delete this guy, and then go, I'm just going to hit 2 to go into Edge Mode. Actually, you know what, I can hit 3 to go into Border Mode, that way I can just select this in one shot. And I'm going to decide how wide I want that bumped out section to be, so if I say maybe something like that, okay, and because I have two of these, because I have two of these, I want these to be the same size. So if I just sort of eyeball this one, then eyeball this one, chances are they're not going to be the same size. So I'm going to go ahead, and yes, I did open Maya, so I'm going to shut that real quick. Don't you hate when that happens? <clears throat> okay, going back to 3D Studio Max here. So what I'm going to do is go into Polygon. I'm going to click on one Polygon and then hold down Shift and click the one next to it, which is going to select them all. Then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to drag this out. So, and I'm going to clone to element, which means it's going to, it's going to remain part of the same object. So there. So actually, you know what? Let's go back because we need to determine uh, sort of the, the, the bump outs here. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to edge, select one edge and then shift click the next one it's going to select them all around then i'm going to open the connect options and i'm going to increase my segments to two you'll see that it cuts in two segments then i'm going to increase my pinch to something like this this is at about 67 let's go a little higher let's go maybe 75 and hit OK. All right. Then I'm going to, again, click an edge here, shift, click the next one. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to hit R for scale. Now I want to scale on the Y, Z plane, right? If I scale from the center, what's going to happen is that's going to have, well, let me see. You know what? Let's do this in face mode, in polygon. Uh, so click one, shift click the other. There we go. So now it's going to scale from the center. So if I if I just scale in all three axes, what's going to happen is that eventually you can see how this will start to go outward. So I don't want that. I want to keep this the width of these polygons the same. So I'm going to do it on the Y. I'm sorry, the ZX plane. I'm going to scale this up like this. Okay, so that's going to give us that bump out section there. And then just to add some detailing to it, I'm going to go back to Edge, click, 
or double click this one hold on shift and and then double click the does that not work in 3d student no i guess it doesn't so i'm gonna double click that one and then sh uh, control there we go control double click so i get a little confused between because i go between maya and and max and it's slightly different in them so that can be a little confusing so you double click one that you control and double click the next edge loop it's going to select the entire edge loop and then i'm going to open the chamfer options let's just reset this so i'm going to increase my chamfer a little bit here and then i'm going to increase the segments to two so let's let's lower the size of that chamfer now you'll find that when i do chamfers or, or in my they're called bevels when i do bevels and chamfers i tend to at least use two segments um, I find that gives me the best results. So, I don't know. We'll just do something like that. Okay, let me look at the image again. Just see how crisp those corners are. So, yeah, they're pretty crisp. So, I, I can decrease the amount of my chamfer. And call it good. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to... So, if I go to turbo smooth here in my modifiers it's going to give me a nice edge oh. now obviously this looks like this let's let's go ahead and get rid of that front polygon right there just so that we don't have that issue going on here and looking at this is that too crisp I don't know let's go back to this image no I think yeah you know what it might be so this is one of those things you, you've got to do a little bit of trial and error until you get it the way that you want so i'm going to actually as i do my undos you can see that it's opening up a little bit so let's uh oh there we go so now let's see turbo smooth see how i like yeah i like that but it's a little softer but it's it it's still got some crispness to it okay so let's go to polygon then okay so now these are still selected i'm going to hit the grow button to grow my selection and get my move tool w hold on shift and drag this out and then put it as far away as i need to and again clone to element so that this this section here is the size that I want I'm gonna I'm gonna call that I'm gonna call that good right there okay so now we need to connect these two sections here and I'm gonna do that again I'm gonna go to border I'm gonna select this border edge and then control and click this border edge and then I'm gonna do a bridge and that should connect those two and if I go to my turbo smooth and hopefully we, here we go now what you'll notice is that the transition is not very good that's just because we haven't added edge loops in here oh you know what on my turbo smooth i'm going to go here and i'm going to turn on iso line display so it doesn't show me all the edges so let's go to edge mode and i'm going to just drag a selection through here it's going to select the entire edge ring there i'm going to go to connect Go on the options and you know 75 let's go maybe 80. that's going to hold that detail there so if i turbo smooth it now you can see this is a lot nicer it's still not great so i might just also select this again and just do a connect with one segment and just zero this out and let's see what that looks like so getting a little bit better um, the other thing we we're going to want to do is bevel these, but I'm going to wait a second. Uh, and then the other way to, to cut edge loops is swift loop. And you can see you hover the mouse over there. You can see where it's going to cut and click. And there we go. We're going to put an edge loop in there. And we'll put more as we go, but this is okay for now. All right. So what's next? So as we go back there, we get to this cap section here. So we're not going to make this detachable. Um, if you if you did want to have to model this part as well and have these interchangeable, then you could make this cat the, the the cap here 
a separate piece which you could then interchange with this for this i'm just going to keep it as a single piece just to simplify uh, make life a little simple okay so again i'm going to select border and make sure I'm, I'm out of my so when you're in a tool you can right click to get out of it so click on this i'm going to pull this back a little bit now it's, you can't really see very well back there but that's okay again when I we don't need to make this perfect so that's okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna just pull this out a little bit here and then I'm gonna hold down I'm gonna get my scale tool hold down shift and scale this up okay so just scale that up and then I'm just gonna go back W and hold down shift and drag this back to here okay and then now this is where we bump into this bit of detail here okay so before we get to that let's let's continue to this side of the uh, flashlight just get the easy stuff out of the way here so again I'm going to select this where are we here oh I didn't didn't I delete this delete there we go so we'll go back to border or three on the keyboard I'm gonna go there so what do we have here we have it bumps out to this section goes forward bumps out to this section goes forward so what we can do get our scale tool which is R on the keyboard hold on shift scale this up get your move tool move it forward just a little bit something like that and let's make sure that that's yeah it's about right Okay, maybe a little bit bigger and maybe we don't move it forward as much okay hold on shift to move it forward okay this is not very deep so we don't need to go very far R for scale shift scale up just like that get your move tool move this forward and then shift to about about that so something like that if you feel like maybe you you pulled it out too much you can just go into polygon mode so four and shift click and then scale again just scaling on a specific plane here and then do the same with this one and scale on this plane so adjustments can be made anytime okay and then we hit now there's a little detail thing here I'm not gonna worry about it again it's such a small detail by all means feel free to put it in you'll see that it's not the same all the way around this it's it's more pronounced here and then when you get to the top it doesn't look like there's any of that so uh, you know put that in if you'd like I'm gonna leave it out just to get this going uh, let's look at it again here okay so this is where we are and I'm gonna hit three to go into border mode again and I want to just scale this in get your move tool hold on shift move this out a little bit and then now before I scale out again I might want to add some detail here with some bevels so I'm gonna hit two to go into edge mode and I'm gonna click on one and then shift click the next one do I need to shift click so if I yeah click on one, shift click on one and then shift click the next one that's correct so then we can uh, do our chamfer and because it remembered our last chamfer settings if I just click the chamfer tool and I can sort of interactively chamfer because it knows that I need two segments so I'm gonna make this one I'm gonna make this one tighter than the last ones just because this is a pretty sharp corner uh, let's see is that good yeah I think that'll be good okay now obviously a lot of detailing that needs to go on here um, while we are here we can go ahead and just do that so I'm gonna the other way you can select edge loops I'm gonna hit Q just to get my selection tool 
could uh, I'm gonna click on one control click on one control click on one and control click on one here so I got four selected and assuming I want to use the same bevel settings for all of them I can then hit the loop button it's gonna loop around and select them all get my chamfer tool and start to do my chamfers and these are gonna be pretty wide and sometimes this tool's a little finicky you have to go side to side I'm, I'm used to things going up and down but you gotta go side to side and let's see what that looks like is that a little too so I think this one here I think these are fine but this one here might be a little soft so what I'm gonna do is go back to before they were there and I'm going to just select this so these three right here and three and I'm gonna loop them and then I'm gonna chamfer those so make them um, not too hard not too soft so something like that and then for this one here click loop it and chamfer maybe make that one let's try that again make that one tighter than the other ones but not too tight so something like that okay um, and then while we're at it we can swift loop the support edge right here and maybe one here and then one sort of centered here okay and then right click to get out of the tool I like to just put a couple in here so I'm going to select all that hit connect get like two let's see two yeah two should be good and hit OK okay it's just just to hold it a little bit there so let's see what it's looking like right now so it's looking like that now let's look at uh, proportion here and you know while we're here this is bugging me so let's go ahead and, and bevel some and uh, chamfer I gotta use the right terminology chamfer these because right now they're still really soft that is bugging me so select all those and loop and then and this one I'm just gonna punch in the numbers so I'm gonna just make these pretty small here so that they're pretty tight so let's oops so we want uh, something like that let's see what that looks like now there we go now we're holding the shape a lot better so let's look at proportionally and again it doesn't have to be exact but let's just look at proportionally how we're liking this I think my bump outs here are a little too wide oops I think this is too big I don't know and I think this is way too long that might be the problem so again let's grab all this and start to move it back and then we can take these two edge loops and slide them this way maybe a little bit more so I don't know yeah let's 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 uh, let's shrink these down here so uh, let's go let's go polygon click on one shift click the next one and then I'm going to grow my selection so here's the grow button so keep hitting grow and I keep going till about there we're gonna include that last chamfer and get your scale tool and I'm gonna again just scale on this axis something like that and I might actually get my move tool and just slide this back a little bit so what does that look like now yeah I think I like that a little bit better okay now obviously we're missing part of the light here but I, th I think this is a little bit nicer and these bump outs here are the other mine might be a little little short okay so again you know this is part of the modeling process you sort of trial and error your way through it so that one 
and then control click shift that one and then we're going to grow our selection to capture these bevels so grow one more time r for scale scale on this axis don't want to go crazy let's see maybe that yeah i think that's that's better okay so moving on back in edge mode and make sure you save your work and I'm just going to do a save as here and I'm going to increment my save hit the plus okay so where are we here up front here we need to come back out and do this this section here now this section here because because there's this little bit of detail here we can actually do this as a separate section but we're going to start it in the same object and then separate it later now you can separate it or you can leave it as part of that it's up to you uh well let's see we'll we'll see what what works so back to here remember we did this tiny little extrusion right there so um going to go to border mode and just click it's going to select the whole edge loop hold down shift and just scale it up now this section is bigger than the previous section as you can see but not by too much okay so don't don't make it too big we want it to be bigger but not too too much bigger and I just want to look and see if there's any sort of tapering I don't think there is but if you want to get your move tool move it forward just a hair not too much something like that hold on shift move this forward you know it's not too big maybe that and then just hold down get your scale tool hold on shift and scale it in again okay and again move tool and we're going to bevel this um, uh, extrude this forward just a little bit okay now I'm not gonna bevel this section uh, because I want to do my details here and I'm gonna try I'm gonna keep my details simple I'm not gonna because if you look at this is a very com complex shape here um, again just in the interest of time I'm just gonna keep it simple so continuing on then now we need the front of the flashlight with the bezel here so we're going to again shift scale out and this section is smaller than this than this section here so oh you know what we need to do too I'm gonna go to hit 2 to go to edge mode select this and shift select that and just move this in just a little bit just so that it matches up with the other one a little bit okay back to border mode select that and pull this out I think there's a tiny bit of taper as it goes to the front. I think there's a tiny bit of taper there. So we can get our scale tool and just scale this ever so slightly down just a little bit. Okay, so, you know, figure out the, the right length. Really up to you how you want to do that. Okay, and then the front of it, get my scale tool, hold on shift, scale it in. It's just a thin, oops. Uh, thin rim like that is that and yeah, maybe a little bit thicker something like that and then obviously it just goes in that way uh, let's see here all right so obviously then it, it just goes back right into the light housing there yeah so move tool shift and just drag it back and for right now we're just going to leave it there and we'll worry about that edge loop later so let's think about the detailing that we're going to do um here on the bezel so you can see it curves in 
and it does it one two three four five wait one two three four five six so it does it six times and what do we have here 36 so we had 36 so that is a multiple of six if my math is still good yeah no it is multiple of six so this should work now i don't know how how much detail i think yeah we'll see um so let's so we have six times six so we have six polygons to go from you know the center of one of these dips to the center of the next dip if i'm calculating that correctly so let's think about this here so what does six polygons look like one two one two three four five six so we have that many polygons this is going to be the center of one one dip and this is going to be the center of the other of the next dip and then the middle is going to be where that juts out okay so now what are, now obviously we don't want to do this six times right so i'm going to just do it once and i will then either use a symmetry modifier to to uh duplicate them around or i can just delete everything but that and then uh, make a, a bunch of copies okay so let's go edge we want this and this right so one two three four five six okay so get our move tool and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna move this back like this and it, you know it's, it's pretty pretty drastic but we can always fix it i'm gonna oops i'm going to slide these back to a little bit less and i'm already seeing that it was pretty drastic so that i could take this and this and bring it back to here and then we can take so these two here are going to be the the uh the end of the point here okay so something like that so what we need to do next is account for some of this detail on the front here okay and to do that we're going to do a simple connect so if we go ahead and grab one of these go to ring and then where is my connect there it is so get get the connect tool we want two segments and i'm going to increase my pinch to really push these to the edge hit okay and then on these ones in the center here the ones on the bumping out section i'm going to actually scale those down and you'll see that you get a little bit of skewing here just because we're scaling so we can actually go to vertex mode and just adjust that okay then back in polygon mode again maybe scale down a little bit get my move tool i'm going to move this out like this okay and this might not you know this might not be perfectly exact in fact what you can see is this line here is pretty straight so we can take these edges here and here and then just move them light them up with this i'm going to hit s to turn on uh, snaps and if i right click on my snaps button the three here make sure that vertex is turned on you can even turn off grid points okay so now and i grab this and move it and snap it to this level here and let's go into vertex mode here and snap that there take this one snap it there now we don't need to go and do the whole thing because again we're just using these six polygons the rest we're gonna get rid of anyway so again here we're going to 
snap to there select this one snap it there and this one as well snap it there so what that's doing is just keeping these straight so that we can have that little bit of detail there okay so that's what we're dealing with so we have basically a, I believe this is called a strike bezel and what it is with tactical lights is that if and this one is, is a pretty sort of uh, tame strike bezel uh, you can find some lights where they're really pronounced and they're, they're designed so that it, if you have to hit somebody with the light it can do uh, it can cause them a little bit of pain and make it hurt a little bit more so that's why they put these little nubs on there to really um, add some pain to it otherwise you might get something I don't know I guess that one's not it so some lights have it pretty flat where you don't have like this one right here you don't have the strike bezel but with this one here you do okay so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna hit S to turn off my snaps okay so that's what that's looking like at the moment and I think that's pretty good uh, see what happens if we move this down just a little bit just to add some interest there okay so I think that's pretty good we go into polygon mode and go in my front view now I want those six polygons so actually before I go in my front view I just want to select those six I believe yep so there they are let's go in our front view so we know the boundaries of those six so let me change my selection tool here and just do this one so this and I hope I got this right here now I think I might have gotten no wrong button I think that one two three four five six yep okay so you need to select all that and then all of this and then I'm going to go back to my uh, square selection and you'll see that we have literally selected everything except those six polygons down the flashlight and I'm going to delete them okay so now those are gone and what I'm going to do is get out of uh, edit poly mode here so just either click on whatever you are on so or just click on edit poly and I'm going to take my object in my rotate tool I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to rotate it 60 degrees and when I do that I'm going to get a clone options box by default it's set to copy I'm going to set mine to instance okay and then I'm going to tell it I want five copies and hit OK. Now an instance is <clears throat> basically what that does is it just makes an uh, it's not really a copy it's, it's it just gives you the same object shown multiple times that way when you adjust something in that one object it happens in all all of them. So hit OK and it's going to go around and give us all those all those uh, copies. So as you can see now we have the six strike bezel points there okay so you can see how that's gonna look and if you wanted to do any adjustments so if I wanted to adjust this you see that it happens on all of them okay so that's where we are right now now if you don't want to do any adjustments to the single one then instead of doing an instance you can do copies okay so for right now I'm gonna do an instance I'm gonna cut a swift loop right about here and maybe one right about here just to support some of this detail here and if I turn on my wireframe you'll see that it's happening on all of them so if I do a swift loop here you'll see that it adds a swift loop there as well okay and maybe on the inside as well one there and one there 
they don't have to match up so don't worry about that okay so I think I don't I think beyond that I don't need to do too many things so I'm gonna actually go ahead and join these up now instances at least last I checked you couldn't combine instances but let's it's been a while since I've uh, tried so if I do an attach and then look for the cylinders yeah they're not there so we're gonna have to do it through or if I get the attach button and try to click on one of these you'll see it won't let me do it so they need to not be instances so let's go ahead and get rid of these and let's do this again so get your rotate tool go 60 degrees 60 this time copy and do five co uh, five copies okay go back to the original one go to uh, click the attach button and click on each one in turn and what that does is basically just combine them into one object now bear in mind though if we go to element you can see if I grab one and say get my move tool I can move it around so they're not merged they're not connected so I'm gonna go to vertex I'm gonna grab everything and I'm going to get the go to weld go to the settings and I want my weld settings it's kinda hard to see this thing there we go so I want my weld settings pretty low because those points are sitting exactly on top of each other so let's go 0.01 that way I'm not merging stuff that I don't want to merge or welding I'm using my terminology and I think that should be good hit OK and the way to check to see if it worked is go to element and if I click on it it selects the whole thing or if I don't click on it because that element was still selected you'll see now that it's connected okay so that's what we wanted let's go to edge So I'm going to let's just click off of here. Uh, so edge, double click, and edge. Now if it stops there, that means there's a problem. So maybe some of these did not merge. Yep, that one. So those those did not merge. So let's undo that. I'm gonna go and select in the front here and do a weld. This time I'm gonna turn it up a little bit and hit OK and then go back to edge unclick that double click and now it went through so sometimes you gotta turn up the threshold a little bit so and then control shift where no what was I doing um, uh oh I hope I'm not crashing yep so I'll be right back once I get this restarted Hopefully it saved a copy of that, which it usually does. And I'm not going to send the thing. So I'll be right back. Okay, so luckily um, it saved a copy <laughs> when it crashed. So Max is pretty good about doing that. So I was able to get the file exactly where it crashed. Uh, so we're still good. Okay, so let's try that again. I'm going to go into edge mode double click one of these <laughs> hold down control and double click the next one there we go see it's it's because I'm constantly f trying to do Maya stuff in Max which uh, Max doesn't like very much you know I'm gonna move these forward just a little bit just a little bit there we go so then what we can do is chamfer these so I'm gonna get my chamfer settings and here we got to be careful because things get really tight right in the front here so we want to make sure we take this down a little bit and let's see if I go down to one um, seg one segment so if we chamfer them like that see what we get so hit OK and I'm going to put that turbo smooth on there and see what that looks like so that's what we're getting right now 
Um, one thing I might have forgotten to do here is to add. Yeah, I did. So let's go back to before our chamfer. Let's keep on doing. Hopefully. Uh, so I'm out of undos. So I'm going to just reopen this file. And so let's reopen that. And one thing I forgot to do with this copy of Max is to increase the number of undos. So under Customize, Preferences, and where is it? Undos. So it's only got 20 undos. I like to turn it up. Um, might be a little bit of slow down your system if you have a lot of undos, but the max is 500. I usually turn up to 500. That way I have the ability to go back quite a few steps. The other thing you might want to look into is your auto backup. Make sure it's enabled. I think it is by default. But the number of files I have, I, I think the default is 3. I turn mine up to 10. And then I give it an interval when it should automatically save. So what this means is... Um, I have mine set to 25 so every 25 minutes it's going to save to one of these 10 files and so it's going to do it sequentially so file one is going to save and then 25 minutes later it's going to save to file two and so on and when it gets to file 10 25 minutes after that it's going to go back and save over file one so that way you have sort of a wide range of files that you could jump back to if you need to um, now on top of this i do save regularly myself so it's a it's a good thing to have where you don't where you're not um, losing a lot of work if things do crash. Okay, um, and sometimes you'll do something that you know somewhat corrupts the file, and even if you go back to to uh, to a previous file, it might not, it might not open well. So you might have to go back a version or two. So it's good to have quite a number of auto back files. Okay, so that is something that. Um, you want to make sure you have set. Okay, so again, I'm going to select these. I think I moved them forward just a little bit. Okay, so let's make sure we add in these here because we want, we want these corners to be somewhat sharp. And I'm hoping we're not going to cause any issues by doing this. We'll see. Uh, that one and this one, this one, oh, nope. No, man. Uh, that one, that one, that one, this one and this one. Okay, so let's do a chamfer. And again, we want to go down to one segment. And we want to shrink our chamfer. So maybe something like that. Hit OK. And let's put a Turbo Smooth modifier. And you can see now that these are much sharper now. You see here, we still have some problems, some vertices not having welded. So let's go, I'm going to turn, if you turn this off, this is show end result. It just shows you the entire stack, even though you're some you're lower down the stack. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to go to vertex. And again, I'm just going to select everything once again. And I'm going to do a weld. And I'm going to increase that threshold again. And when I increase it, making sure that some of these really small bevels here don't get eaten up and none of them did let's look at the turbo smooth now we're not having those weird issues I think we're good now finally okay so going back in here the next thing I want to chamfer is this edge loop going around here so again get my chamfer this time I do want two segments and I think that should be good. Let's see what that looks like. So there we go. So right now I only have one iteration. If I bump it up to two, it, it'll smooth it out and look a, look a lot better. 
Okay, so my mind seem a little just compared to the image. These are really short. I like mine a little bit longer, but they I think they're a little too long. So I'm gonna come in here, just go on my side view and grab that. Just move them back a little bit. See what that looks like. There we go. So they're not they're not quite as extreme, but I think that'll work. Okay, and again with my turbo smooth, I'm gonna hit ISO line display so it's not showing me every single edge there. Now obviously there's some chamfering to do in here. I'm gonna chamfer this one here. And so let's chamfer. And that's a really tight chamfer. Let's widen it just a bit. Something like that. And so now that's now again, we still have to deal with this. But I think what we're getting here is pretty nice. Okay. So now, well, I guess we can tackle this section here. So again, just because six, well, let's see. Let me degrees. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Go to polygon, click on one, shift, click the other, and I'm going to hit the grow button once then I am gonna go to where is it um, it's probably right in front of my face isn't it where is my detach did I lose my detach hmm Soft selection. Ah, edit geometry was closed. I hate when that happens. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, detach and let's do detach. So make sure none of these are checked because I want to make it a separate object. So I'm just going to detach it. Then I'm going to get out of Edit Poly, and that way I can select this guy. And I'm just going to right-click in the viewport, go to Isolate Selection. So that's going to leave us with this this guy uh, by himself. So we got to decide how many of these. So all I'm going to do is just do some indentations. I'm not going to try to angle them, just because you know I don't want to spend the time doing that. Um, I'm going to do like what I did before though. So go to edge, click on an edge and you can ring select it. And then we're going to go to our connect, get two segments, increase the pinch so that they're wider. Okay. And then get your scale tool and scale it on a, on a plane. We're just going to lift this out just a little bit, just like that. Okay, so we're just going to give it a little bit, a little bit of shape there. Okay, so now i got to figure out how, so I'm going to go vertex. I'm going to select these, make sure I don't have that one, and see how we want to do this. So if I... Pull this one down here like this. Do I want to include these two? Make sure I selected everything I wanted. See, because now, yeah. So if I do, no, that's too much. So I'm going to keep it just to that one right in there. And then I'm going to 
do, 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 do. let's try yeah let's try the connect so again get edge click this click ring and where's connect it's down here this time I'm going to do one segment and instead of pinch so I'm going to zero out pinch by just right clicking on it I'm going to use slide I'm going to slide it to about 56 and then what I'm going to do instead of hitting the OK the check mark I'm going to hit the plus and then click on this edge here and hit ring and it's going to select these edges here and uh, start the operation and I want this to be minus 57 and then hit OK so it's equal on both sides and just control double click and then alt to deselect those and bring this down here like this yeah I think this will work better go into vertex and just curve this down this way Okay, I'm just going to put a turbo smooth on here. Let's just see what it's looking like. Isoline display. I'm going to turn it up to two. Okay, so we have our little divot or indentation right there. And this is all contained within. I'm going to save just in case things want to try to crash on us again. So this is all contained within those two polygon segments so this thing is still exactly as wide as two of these over here okay so I didn't put I didn't cut anything in on this side of it I kept it all on the inside um, and if I want this to be sharper what I can do select an edge there select an edge there hit ring I'm gonna go to my connect again and this time I'm gonna um, zero out my slide and hit OK just to add a little something in there to make that a little bit sharper and then what I can also do let's go to edge is select these here and so let's experiment I'm gonna just try this here this and do another connect no oh, did I miss something yes there connect and actually before I do that connect I'm going to have this if I slide yeah they slide the same way so we're gonna deselect one side and I'm gonna slide this over this way so that's negative 38. I'm going to hit the plus, then select these edges and make this a positive 38, then hit OK. Okay, so that's cut that there. So I'm going to control, get my move tool, just slide this up a little bit. We'll see if this will work. And then what we can then do is get our cut tool, cut from this point to this point, right click. So click here, click here, then right click. And there to there and right click. So what that'll allow us to do is to remove these edges so control and backspace so what we've done is basically made a loop going around this way Let's see what that does okay so that's sharpen that now we might have some artifacting here I think what we can do to clean that up is simply to cut in an edge loop there and there Let's see what that does yeah so that cleans it up for you okay so 
so so so okay I think that should be fine so I think that should be good enough I don't think we need to do anything else well let's see how this looks so I'm gonna hit save and then I'm going to so the way I, the way I'm thinking here is that we'll have one of these then we'll skip two then we'll have another one there skip two and so on so I'm going to go into polygon and I'm going to delete everything except let's see yep I'm going to delete everything let's go on the front view here so I'm going to delete everything except this and one half of the next two on either side delete okay and then so here here here's a an issue that we have here I'm gonna get out of isolation mode so end isolate so my move tool if I hit W where is my move tool it's at turn my grid on here no oh no we're good my mistake I thought we had a I thought our move tool wasn't where it's supposed to be but it is so let's see what we need to do here so let's get the ro rotate tool and hold down shift make sure angle snap is on so what is that 40 degrees let me do some math real quick well so this is going to be nine of them then so let's do eight copies did i get that right yes okay so it wasn't 12 like i was thinking it was going to be but whatever if it bugs you it's not the same you can always make it different for me it's fine don't really care so there we go so we have now nine of these i'm going to just go ahead and select them all and again i'm going to isolate them just to uh, deal with this and oh you know what i had the turbo smooth on so i'm gonna have to go through and delete the turbo smooth on all of them that's kind of annoying but i don't think you can do them yep it won't let you do them all at once so let's delete delete so no big deal we're just going to delete them and just make sure you got them all i think i did Okay, so I'm going to select the main one, then go to attach, and just click on each one. Okay, and turn off your attach, vertex, select them all, zoom right in, make sure that nothing's getting welded that shouldn't be, get your weld tool, turn it up, hit OK, let's put a turbo smooth on it. And make sure that everything welded, and I think it did. Okay, let's end isolate. Okay, I think this ring looks like it's a little big, so I'm gonna go to polygon, I guess. Select it all. Get my scale tool and scale it on this plane so it's not so wide. yeah and then I might also just widen it this way there we go okay not exact but good enough for me 
Okay, so um, I guess we'll get to the sort of the, the glass and the bulb and whatnot later. Let's go back to the tail section here. And while I'm here, let's do some chamfering. So double click, control, double click, and let's do a nice little tight chamfer. That one might be a little too tight. My computer's running a little slow on this because, there we go, um, this file's pretty big from when I modeled everything, um, so no big deal. Okay, so we are at the point where we need to put in these. Now we got to remember that we have, uh, let me just make sure, I believe we have 36 Why are you? Oh, did I not submit my bevel? Haha. Uh -huh. So double click, control double click. And where's my. Uh, where'd it go? Chamfer. Okay. There, that was weird. Um, so I'm going to just select the ring and I believe it says 36 edges selected so that is how many edges we have so we want 36 of those sort of bump outs and if, if we look at this here let's go you'll see that I have something very similar right here okay so but we need 36 around. So the way that I make these, I'm going to make them separately and then attach them. So what we need to do is make a new plane. And I want to make sure that the length and width are the same because these are squares. So let's do, I don't know. Two, two by two. It's going to be really tiny. Okay, so I'm going to hit Z to zoom in on it, or Z depending on where you where you are. Okay, so this is going to represent one of those bump outs, and I'm going to convert this to an editable poly. Now. I'm going to go into polygon mode and select the one polygon and see I haven't done this in a while here so da, 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 where are you what we can do I think again I'm in Maya mode so you know what just make it quick. I'm going to cut from this corner to this corner, right click, then cut from this corner to this corner, and right click. Then go to vertex mode. Oh, get out of your cut tool, select that center vertex, and move it up. Okay, so let's just keep it simple. And then I'm going to go to border, click on the border edge, uh, get your scale tool, hold down shift and just scale outward. Now the reason I want to do this is I want to have a thin strip of polygons going around each one of these because that's going to hold the detail a little bit better. Um, and I do it, th I scale them out that way rather than say select one edge extrude it this way and then select this edge this edge and 
do them this way so you can you will get the same effect here but the problem is instead of having just one edge straight across you now have one two and then you'd have a third one on the other side so now you're gonna you're not gonna have 36 if you have 36 of these things you're gonna have way more than 36 edges because of the you, so there's gonna be three across here so things aren't going to line up so i need to make sure that i still have just one edge going across so to do that i would have to select this border get my scale and scale it out a little bit so you see that i still have one connecting edge that's going to connect into the flashlight okay now here if i want to maybe detail this a little bit let's try this let's try selecting all four of these and let's do a chamfer notice that i did not select this edge because i don't want i don't want it to get chamfered where it splits into two edges that are now adding to what's going to have to be connected into the flashlight so i'm going to just do these and i'm just experimenting here but hopefully this will work so oh, wrong one i wanted chamfer and let's i'm just going to zero that out and then add some in so something like this all i need this for is to help this sort of catch the light let's go 0 0.01 Something like that. So it's going to catch some light. So it uh, looks a little bit better. Let's see what it looks like with two segments. No, I don't need two segments. It's going to be a lot of polygons. So, yes, that's, that's good. And then what we need to do is get rid of this. Because now we have an end gone here which is and here, which is weird. So we're going to get our target weld. And I'm going to click on this one. And then click on that one. It's just going to weld it over. So click and click, click and click, and click and click. Okay, so again, we still have only one edge going across. That's what we want. Okay, so that's one of our, oh, where'd it go? That's one of the bump outs here. And you can, do, you can decide how tall you want this to be. Mine might be a little too tall, so maybe something like that. Okay, and, every, and then we got a quad here. And don't worry about the triangles. I know triangles are, people make a big deal about triangles. Triangles aren't that bad. It's the end gons that you want to get rid of. Okay, so we have one of these set up here. Um, so if we if we decide I think I think yeah so front and back is this way so what I what I also like to do is go into edge mode select the front edge and the back edge I'm not selecting anything going sideways and get my scale tool now my scale tool should be in the center of them and the reason it's not is because I'm using the pivot point center so if I hold down my left click on here and then select the second one it's going to do them like that. So I'll hold down shift and scale them. Okay, so what this is going to do is just going to create some faces in the front and the back. And this is not going to interfere with, with its ability con to connect into the rest of the flashlight. Okay, so I'm going to save my work. I would suggest you do that too. Okay, next thing we need to do is duplicate this 36 times. Okay, because we want we want them to be 36 so that they line up perfectly with the 36 sides of that uh, cylinder. Okay, now the problem is um, I want these to snap to each other perfectly. And to do that, I need to move my pivot. So I'm going to turn on my snaps again. And again, if you right click on here, make sure, I'm going to turn off grid points. Make sure that vertex is turned on. Okay, close that. So I'm going to come into this tab right here, Hierarchy tab. I'm going to select Effect Pivot Only. 
Okay, this allows me to move the pivot of an object, and because my snaps are turned on, I can snap the pivot to a vertex. So get my Move tool, and I'm going to click in the middle here, and I'm going to snap it to that vertex, and then turn off Effect Pivot Only, and hit S to turn the snaps off. Now you'll see why it needs to be snapped to a, to a vertex. Okay, so then what we're going to do is hold down shift and drag this actually door you know before we do that we want to turn our snaps back on and then hold down shift and drag this out till it snaps to its own vertex on this side so it snapped the copy to the end of this one okay and then for number of copies we want 35 so the 35 copies plus the original is 36 hit OK and we get that okay so that is what we want and actually I'm gonna undo that and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second here so right now this object is called plane 19 so I'm just gonna call this bump 01 so the reason I'm just giving it a random name like that is just so I can find it later easier because I got a whole bunch of stuff. You look at my, I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here, and I want to, I want to make this easy to find. So again, shift, drag, and snap it to there. I want 35 copies. Hit OK. Then reselect the original. So we have all these here. So we reselect the original, go into attach, but instead of hitting attach and then clicking on, on 35 of these things, we're going to go into the attach list. So click on that. And what do we call it? Bump. So anything with the word bump on it, I'm just going to click the first one, scroll down, hold down shift, click the bottom one to select them all and hit attach. And it's going to attach them all. So real quick, real easy. Okay, so then we're going to go into Vertex, and we want to make sure that these merge down, because um, the way it is now, we have, I'm going to turn my snaps off, the way it is now is if I select one, you'll see that they're not merged. So really, there's two edges coming through here. We need it to be one. So we need to go through, and I'm just going to select these two, and I'm going to see what weld setting will merge these down. Actually, I'm going to select, yeah, so this number is too high because it's it's uh, merging everything. So let's go point, let's go point 0.1. Let's go point 0.05. Let's go point 0.01. So those are good. Oops. Let's hit OK and see what happened. Are we down to 1 here? So 0 0.01 is a good number, so I'm going to select all these and then do a weld. I'm just going to click weld. It's going to use that last number. And I'm just going to randomly select some of these and check. Those are welded. And this is welded, so I think I'm good. So if I go to edge, click on this one and do a loop, it should select them all the way to the end, and it should give me 36 as you can see right there. Perfect. Let's do the same on this side. Let's go to loop 36. So this is what I want. Okay. Now, we got to decide. So we got 36. So if we made this into a circle, they'd be 36. They'd connect perfectly. What we need to do is decide how many deep we want. So one so uh, you, now you'll notice that these are diagonal they're not flat on like mine are i just wanted it to be faster and quicker and easier so i just didn't make them diagonal but you could have done that and it would have been fine um so one two one two three four five um let's go with four so again because that pivot point is still at that vertex we're going to hold down shift and we're going to um, you know what, now that I'm thinking about this, let's get rid of this 
row of polygons because I'm just thinking here do we want that gap yeah we need to get rid of one of them reason being this gap because right now so let's just let me just illustrate this so if I were to turn on my snaps hit s and drag this down and snap it there let's just do one copy for right now what you'll notice is that this gap is double wide here because it's this one and the bottom one combined to make this twice as wide as we probably want it to be so let's undo that go to polygon and let's shift select that and delete it that way we'll only have one polygon width of gap between them okay so get out of polygon shift drag and snap and what do we say four so we want three copies hit OK yeah you know what let's do five that changed my mind a lot and we do four copies now remember don't go too crazy with this because you are adding a lot of polygons here so um, you know go easy with it so again I'm gonna go to the attach list and anything with bump I'm gonna select and attach right there and then we're gonna go to vertex select all of these and weld and then let's just do a check select one I'll turn off my snaps yep that got welded that got welded so I think we're good and then of course if I come in here will it let me do a loop no it won't so unfortunately I gotta go through and select all of these so that I can add that little extra you know what no I don't have to do that I can do that later when we uh, hey, you know what I'm already here I'm all over the place I'm a little ADD in case you haven't noticed that's okay so let's just go ahead and select all of these it's annoying because you gotta select 35 Wrong one. There we go. Okay, we selected all of them. So all I'm going to do is just hold down Shift and then drag that back out. And I don't care that it's not mathematically accurate, the same size as the other one. Um, it really doesn't matter. Okay. So there we have it. So we have this nice plane of those bumps. What do they call them knurling or whatever so that should be good so now how do we get that make it into a circle and attach it very simple now when I when I go to do stuff like this I like to duplicate off a copy so I'm just gonna hold shift and duplicate one off we'll call it a copy and I'm just going to right click on it and go to hide selection so in case I screw this up badly I can always have a copy waiting for me so I'm just going to save here. Okay. So what we need to put on here is a bend modifier. So click on that. And then we just got to figure out where we want to bend. So I'm going to set my angle to 360. And I need to figure out the axis. There we go. X axis. In this case, it works. Sometimes you got to mess with the direction. So you can actually get some pretty cool effects like this by adjusting the direction and on the different axis. Well, that's interesting. Right, so, so we're going to do X with nothing in direction. And that will bend that. And it should align these points up perfectly. 
So on top of that bend, I'm going to put an edit poly. And again, this is this is sort of the non-destructive um, workflow here. And what I need to do is then come in here. I need to merge these. I need to weld these down here again because again, if I click on this, you'll see that these two are not welded, and neither are these right here. So that they're still separate. So I need to go select all of these and I'm going to hit the weld and it's still going to be using those last settings I use so hit weld now that weld was too big so I'm going to come in here actually it's not using my last settings is it okay something got reset so 0.01 was the one that I liked hit OK and just click on one and move it around you'll see that they are welded let's just do one of these so there we go so if we get edge and go to click on one and go to loop, I should have 36 edges. I do. Let's go on this side, click on one, loop it, 36 edges. Okay, so we are lined up. Now we need to align this to this. Um, eyeballing it is not going to be good enough, so we want to make sure that it's perfectly aligned to this. So first thing we need to do, is get out of this. Now you'll see that my pivot points are not in the center. Um, that may or may not matter. Let's let's try let's try it without fixing that and see what we do. So where's my align tool? So right here is your align tool. If you click on it, there's different options, but we want just the standard align tool. Now, I got to remind myself how it works. Click on a line and with this object selected, then you click on this object. And here, let me make it so I can see what happens here. This aligned to this, you'll see that it it went in there. Now, it, you can see that it's not centered. That's because it's aligning according to the pivot points. So current object, I want to align to center. And target object because the pivot point is in the center it's fine so this should be good i'm going to hit okay so it didn't matter that it wasn't centered now it's going to matter now when we try to scale this up so to center your pivot back here hierarchy tab affect pivot only and center to object then turn off effect pivot only so I'm just going to pull this back here and I'm going to scale it up. Okay, and let's pull it back some more. And scale it up. Now, it's going to be real hard save here before this crashes again gonna be real hard to get this perfect so what I do is instead of trying to match it up like that I'm just gonna move this back a little ways and I'm just gonna bridge between them and hopefully you won't be able to see the difference so let me just scale this down a little bit well, let's see how close is that it's pretty close you, you can see that it's either just a little small or just a little big it's because the scaling that's 101 percent so let's let's go 100.5 that's probably close enough and I'm gonna hit F4 to turn on my wireframe here just want to make sure that these are lighting up and you can see that they are let's hit F3 for wireframe you can see that these are lighting up pretty well with that object so let's get out of there so I'm gonna again I'm gonna just grab this I'm gonna move it back a little bit Go into this object. Make sure that make sure that we don't have any um, 
turbo smooths on there we don't select this object come down to edit poly and get your attach button and then click on that now that is now part of that object and then we go to border select this border control click that border and hopefully our bridge will work and it did and then what I can do is just delete so let's go to edge to select that go to loop and control backspace to delete it and there we are go to vertex just gonna select all of this make sure that I got it all and yep I did let's move this forward a little bit alright now you can see obviously that these these are really big compared to these and that was just a save in polygons I could have made them smaller but to make them smaller I would have had to have more of them going around the object and if I'm gonna have more of them going around the object then I would need to have more edges going around the cylinder so it would have been just overall much higher resolutions uh, flashlight and if that's what you want to do that's absolutely fine but I want to keep mine simple so this I think is good enough turn the wireframe off here uh, and you can see now it's turbo smooth so at tur when it's turbo smooth it's at 178,000 uh, poly uh, polygons and that's with uh, an iterations of two so if I turn that down to one it's about 44,000 so the way I see it is this thing could probably be left unsmooth unless your camera is coming real close to the object then you might hit it with a smooth okay so you don't need to smooth it unless you're going to be real close up on it then you might hit it with a smooth but you can see that they, they hold their shape because um, we bevel them to make sure that they do tiny bit of artifacting in the corners but it's so minor that I'm not gonna worry about it and the reason that is is because we have these little triangles in here okay so if you if you had wanted to not make them be triangles um, you could have just cut from one once you had them connected you could have just cut from one to the other and then deleted these edges and then now these are quads I don't know if it's gonna smooth any better well which one was that I lost it there it is so let's deselect so maybe a little bit better but they kind of merge funny here so you know it's up to you um, so I'm gonna undo this Okay, there we go. Now we're back. But that, for me, that's that's not a big deal. And this is likely, actually, it might, it might be. I might actually make it this color. You're not gonna really see it. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's continue on. So just this back part goes out a little bit. There's a tiny little bump up here, and then it just goes around to the base of that. Okay, so go to border, and where are we here? There we go. Select the border edge. Ex hold on, shift, extrude it out. Extrude out a little bit. Get your scale tool, or scale, there it is. Scale up a little bit. Get your move tool, and extrude out and we have a nice sort of gradual sort of curve there so what I'm gonna do is through this much scale it down to where I feel like it's going to where I feel like it needs to be like maybe there and then we can so go to two for edge mode and Okay, I'm just gonna ring it sometimes it doesn't work so let's I'm gonna reset my connect 100 click on that S push this out maybe scale it up 
and then we can try to chamfer with a really big chamfer you know let's cancel that for right now let's go ahead and oops loop this let's move it out a little bit more same thing here loop this move it out scale it up and then chamfer so make this a pretty big chamfer okay so then just double click and move this back so something like that okay now it looks like there's some kind of gasket here or something like that I don't really care so you can mess with that if you like I'm just going to select this move this back a little bit extrude it back and so we're going to extrude a little ways here so shift pull this back to here then there's a gap maybe another gasket right there and then it sort of folds over again there so let's see I'll do this this way this time I'll extrude out a little bit then extrude here so that's that and then just like we did here I'm going to extrude some more and scale it down and then select this ring it and connect scale this up and chamfer it just look at it from the side okay maybe maybe oh see I make this mistake all the time there we go you have to actually commit those changes and then they will stay get your move tool move this forward maybe scale it down just a little bit okay so something like that maybe take this one and move it back just a little bit there we go okay you know what it doesn't get as quite as small as I've made it that's not too bad though so I'm going to scale this up and move it back. Something like that. Save it. And then we have this rubber piece here. Now, we can, you know, I can this is looks like it's a different material than this. So, I can always separate these out later. So, right now I'm just going to build them and then I can pull them apart later um, to apply, you know, different materials to them okay so what we need to do is this wavy area you know looks like it might be wavy I'm just gonna make it make some ridges on there for simplicity's sake so pull this out about there yeah, that's good now and then and I'll come back to put the ridges in so I'm gonna extrude out a little bit here get my scale bring this up for that part maybe a little bit more get my move tool bring that the back and I'm just gonna assume it has something similar on this side S hold on shift scale this down get your move tool move it forward there we go and then oops Go forward a little bit there and then go oh, let's do that. Shift drag this out and it sort of tapers. So we will taper down to something like that. 
and then we got a wire coming out of the end of it. So how that wire connects back there, we can just make it up. So I'm going to extrude this in. And then where'd you go? There you go. And then extrude it in this way. And then what I can do is double click this, control double click that. And if we do a chamfer, let's reset it and then increase our chamfer. Whoa. Okay, maybe not so much. Let's increase the segments. Something like that. Okay, so and then we'll have our wire coming out of there. Now the wire is going to be the wire I'm going to hold off on, reason being that the wire is going to be determined by where this pressure switch is located on the gun. So I'm going to make the pressure switch and then put it on the rail somewhere. And then, depending on where this light is, I'm going to then connect the two with the wire. So the wire is going to be dependent on where the, the switch is on the gun. Um, and then I'm going to run the, the wire using curves to that pressure switch. So right now, I'm not going to make the wire. Um, because if I made it now, I'd probably have to make it straight and then bend it to its final position. Um, and that doesn't really make sense. So what I'm going to do is just hold off on that until the uh, switch is done. You know, while we're here, I'm going to click on get out of here and then click on this object. I'm going to delete that turbo smooth. And I'm going to connect it back into this object just to make my life easier. So edit poly, attach, and attach that guy. And then uncheck, attach. So this is what our light is looking like right now. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty big light right now compared to our rifle. So what we need to do, and we, you know, you could do this really any time. But I'm going to start, I'm going to scale it down here until I get it where I need it to be. Oh, wrong window. There we go. So just looking at different rifles here. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're pretty decently sized lights. Let's see, I think this is more or less the model. So it's it's decently large. Not this large, but... Maybe something like that. And if I feel like it's not wide enough, I could always just scale it up this way. And then scale the whole thing down. So if it was on this rail here, it'd be something. And sometimes they have them pretty far forward. So I just, uh, I found that it depends, it, it's all about preference and the user's preference. So where are we here? Yeah. So some guys will have these pretty far forward. You know, I'm thinking that this is still a little too long, so I might bring this back here. Hmm. Is it looking really thin? If it's looking really thin, I'm going to, without making it any, any longer, I'm just going to scale it on on the ZX plane just to fatten it up a little bit while keeping it the same length. I think that's looking good. Kind of. Maybe I went too far with that last one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to right click and just isolate this to hide everything else. Now, if you remember at the beginning, I said I might add some more of this detail up front here because it's kind of bland up here. So what I'm going to do, let's go into Polygon. And I'm going to select, I'm going to do this in a side view. There we go. I'm going to select all this stuff here. And I want to hold down, get my move to hold down shift and drag. And I want to clone to element, hit OK. So now I have this. 
So what I'm going to do here is select this polygon, shift select this, and let's go ahead and delete that. And then what we could also do is take this and just move it forward just to get it out of the way. Bring this back here. Scale it up. So get a close. That's pretty close. Close enough. So again, I'm just going to leave a gap between them. Go to border, click one, control click the other, and bridge that. Yeah, maybe it's not as close as I thought. So what I, I mean, what I can do is just delete both these edge loops. Click that one. So double click and control double click, control backspace. That'll get rid of that. And then I can put in my support edge here with a swift loop. So I have a support edge right there. And maybe one right here. Okay. So then, now, did I leave behind? Yes. So there is this little piece where we hear element. There's this piece here that needs to be reconnected to this. So again, I'll just leave a little bit of a gap here. Go into border mode, click, control, click, and bridge. So there's a little bit of taper there, which I actually kind of like. So I'm going to leave that. And then we can now bring these back here. Let's get up real close. So bring it something like that. Okay, so I kind of like that better. Puts a little bit of extra visual interest up front here. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Um, hmm. So I think I shouldn't do this because it adds polygons, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. Um, yeah, let's go ahead. I want to add another row of these. Maybe even two. So, what we, how we can do that. Let's save my work here. And let me increment my save. So, save as. And then just hit the plus, And it's going to increment that save. So, what we can do here is polygon. Click. Shift click. Let's delete that, which again is going to separate this. Let's go to element. So the element is just, it'll select polygons that aren't, at, aren't attached to something else will get selected. So it's going to select entire pieces. So I'm going to select these three. Just move them out of the way for right now. Then I'm going to go to polygon. And again, I need to probably come into a side view here. And I'm going to select... Oh, what happened? Polygon. Let's try that again. I'm gonna select this. And it looks like it got everything I wanted. Great. And I'm gonna shift and drag this out. And clone to element. And I want the gap between this row and this row to be about the same as that, so let's see here. Oh, actually, you know what? That gap is already there, so I need this to just touch there. And let's get in real close here. Get it close. There we go. And then, yeah, let's add another one. Why not? Just clone this over. To there, clone to element. 
Okay, so what we need to do then is do some merging. So select those first two. And I want to zoom in real close to one of these just to make sure that they do, in fact, merge. Now you can see it's not perfect. I actually overlapped here. So if I wanted to fix that, I could just select this element here. Where is my move tool? There it is. I'm going to go into expert mode, which is control X, which basically maximizes the, the viewport. And just click and maybe pull this back just a touch. Still a bit of a gap. So I'm trying to use maximize my the use of my screen here. Gap. Yeah, overlap. Yeah, this is now if I really if I really wanted to be super duper accurate with it. <coughs> excuse me. What I could have done was just detach this to its own object, snap the pivot point to the edge, and then snap the edges, but uh, I'm just gonna keep it simple. and do something like that. Okay, a little bit of overlap. I think that's good enough. Okay, go to two for vertex. I'm sorry, one for vertex. Control X to get out of this mode. And I'm gonna zoom right in here and I'm gonna get my weld. And again, I'm gonna go 0.01. It looks like it welded those. I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to go check this one. Looks like it welded that. So I think we're good. OK, so I've added a little bit extra there. So now I can go back here, element, pull these back. And again, to avoid having to do all that lining things up, I'm just going to go to border, click, control click, and bridge. And then I'm going to go into edge mode, double click that, control backspace to delete it. And then maybe I can. Pull this back. Okay, maybe pull it back some more. There we go. Okay. And you know, this thing here is still kind of bugging me a little bit. I think it's a little too soft. So what I'm going to do is I'm in edge mode. I'm just going to double click this, control double click that, and I'm going to chamfer these. Maybe let's go down. I'm going to get it back down to two segments. I'm going to make it pretty tight. There. There we go. I like that much better. Okay, let's see if we can improve it a little bit more. So I'm going to select that. And what you can do is hide unselected. And then I'm going to go to Swift Loop. And I'm going to cut in an edge loop real close right there. And another one real close right here. So that's going to. Yeah, that's going to really tighten those edges. Okay, so let's go to Polygon here and don't forget to do this. So just unhide all. It's going to bring back everything else. See what that looks like. Yeah, I like that much better. Okay, so we still have some chamfering to do back here. I'm going to edge mode. Now, like I said before, since these are sort of separate pieces, separate materials, 
we can go ahead and st and uh, separate them now. So I'm just going to select this, and then I'm just going to grow my selection to there, and I'm going to do a detach. Okay. I want to end my isolation, and then isolate again so that it isolates without that back piece, just so that I can see here. Go into border mode. Get your scale tool. Shift, hold down shift and scale. And I'm just going to scale this in. And then go to edge mode. Double click this guy here and chamfer. Oops. That was a little too much right there. Okay, so that'll do that. And you know, what I might also do is just double click this edge. Ugh, I forgot to commit my chamfer again. What happened to my tool? There it is. Okay, there we go. Um, in edge mode, let's double click this. Save my work quick. And get your move tool. Just do this so that there's sometimes light will pass through there if, if you don't have something to block it so I put these types of things in there and you may have to just chamfer this so that it doesn't act actually you know what you probably won't I think that'll be fine let's not let's not waste the polygons so there we go so let's end our isolation here and now let's select this object so get out of there Select this object and isolate. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll go edge, double click, get your scale tool, shift and scale, double click this, chamfer, two segments. I'm going to zero it out and then just use the arrows. and hit OK. And this one here we want to just send this inward a little bit so polygon just select all those and we're gonna bevel those wow so let's see bevel by local normal so you gotta click this by polygon, by group, by local normal. And I'm going to zero out the amount and zero this out as well. So you can see if we, we want to go inward. And we don't want to go very far, something like that. And if you want to add some bevel to it, let's. Oh, you know what? I'm going to zero this out and. Yeah, there we go. So just we'll just use the height. I guess we don't need to, to uh, do any more than that. So make it nice and small. And then we have to go to edge mode. Double click, control, double click, control, double click, and control. Double click. And we're going to do a nice tight chamfer on all these. So let's make it nice and small. And let's go ahead and put a turbo smooth on there. Nice align display. So there we go. So as you can see, we have some artifacting there. That's just because we don't have support edges. So let's go to edge. Swift loop. One there. One there. There we go. Okay. So down here, we can go to edge mode and just bevel and chamfer this. Should be good. Now there was a section here which was, where did it go? Right in there. So because I scaled up 
Is this thing squashed? Let me see. Yeah, it looks like we are squashed. Hmm. So let's get our scale tool. Why are we looking squashed here? Let me end my isolation quick. Is this guy squashed too? No, that's round. So somewhere along the line we got squashed. But I'm not sure where. Did my... No. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, no big deal. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And the reason I'm going to eyeball it is that this part is probably rubber. So if it got a little bit squashed, I'm not too concerned with it. You know, it makes it look a little less perfect, which is good. So let me isolate it again. So it's it's rounder now. It might not be perfect, but that's good. Yeah, I'm not sure when that when that happened, but it happened, so no big deal. So polygon. So because I I sort of fattened this thing up, this is kind of now jutting out a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna scale it down this way. And I should probably. Lengthen. Did these get separated? Maybe they did. No, they didn't. Okay. Let's go ahead and why are my verts? not showing up over here let's just make sure we didn't want to unhide all yeah somehow those got left behind no big deal so there and just move this out here and maybe maybe this guy too let's make sure we're not leaving anything <clears throat> and then this area in between them I hate when that happens uh, need some some detailing there. Let's make it a little bit longer. Um, so all I'm going to do here, just to again keep things simple, is do a connect and just add in a bunch of. So what do we have? Twelve. Let's try twelve and see what happens. Um, so what I'm going to do. Just double click, holding down control. I'm just going to double click every other one. And get my scale tool. And I'm going to scale on the Y, on the, I'm sorry, the XZ plane again. And then I'm going to do a chamfer. A pretty, pretty large chamfer. like that and then select those valleys and do another another chamfer make this one a little smaller like that and I might just chamfer this make this one nice and tight and might as well do this one too. Okay, this one. I want this one to be a little bit bigger. And let's let's add this side too. Okay, this one. Make this one tighter. go 
this one here let me see what do we have yeah it's, it's, it's kind of defined we'll do a slightly bigger chamfer here okay and then maybe string this and connect it but we don't need 12 we need maybe two and then I'm gonna pinch just have some support edges right there okay so just keeping it simple and our isolate I did uh, yeah for some reason that got moved we're oh I see why it's because it scaled it okay so there's our end cap and we might actually because it this looks like looks like some kind of metal and this looks like a rubber so we can separate these as well so let's go to polygon select this and I'm just gonna grow my selection until it gets down here and I'm gonna grow it you know I shouldn't have beveled that but no big deal I'm just gonna grow that there actually what I'm gonna do is just select this delete it select this and delete it then I can just simply go to element select this guy and actually before I do that I'm gonna go to edge double click this and just extrude this one inside of that one do the same on this guy extrude this inside there and then double click this one and do a chamfer on it pretty tight chamfer okay and then this one which is that guy I'm just gonna scale out just so there's no light leaking or whatever from there so that's what the little look at just slots right in there and again we need a support edge there so swift loop put one there something like that okay so then we can go to element and select this guy and then uh, where's detach there it is so I don't know we'll call this uh, rubber base or something like that I don't know okay so now our flashlight is in three pieces something like that and if we want to this red color is a little distracting so I'm just going to go ahead and put on the same sort of gunmetal gray here so I'm gonna hit M and now I gotta go find it da, 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 da. where did I put it it's been a while since I looked for it gunmetal there it is so right click assign material to selection So that's what it's looking like right now. All right. So that's what we have for now. And I guess the next thing we'll do is the, the front of it. So the glass over the front, we'll do the reflector dish on the inside and we'll put the light bulb. Uh, I believe these lights all now use LEDs. 
Um, so we got, I, you know, we'll look at examples of that and we'll we'll model that.